Um, what, what does a, a, a club being owned by a sovereign wealth fund do in terms of inequality, first of all? Well, we'll see. Um, I don't think it's going to narrow the gap. Um, and, uh, you know, potentially going to make life more competitive and crowded at the top of the Premier League. But very early days, um, you know, very little information out in terms of what their aims are, what their strategy is going to be. But, you know, clearly it's a country with um, enormous wealth behind it. And you have to believe that uh, they're going to take it seriously. Well, we're constantly reviewing and we've made no secret of the fact that we, we want to improve our financial regulation. Um, I think our record uh, in terms of the owners and directors test over the last two years is, is actually pretty impressive um, in as much as we've been robust. Um, we've stood pretty firm. We've, we have resisted um, quite a number of applications. And we've done that largely because of the way we were able to tighten, or not that we were able, the way that we tightened our rules in the wake of the Berry problem. Um, so for example, we now act earlier. It is, it is no longer sufficient for um, potential owners to demonstrate proof of funds after they've bought the club. Um, so we're, we're more proactive uh, and that has been extraordinarily helpful in terms of not only checking the sufficiency of funds, but also the source of the funds. Clearly, except that in the Newcastle case, sufficiency of funds unlikely to be a problem. Um, if, no, we don't specifically have clauses on human rights. Um, we have a lot of overseas owners um, at, at every level of the EFL. Um, and as I said, you have to constantly respond to changing circumstances. Um, and as I said, we've made no pretense that it's always work in progress for us. So can our owners and directors be improved still further? Yes, clearly. Um, but as I said, the last two years, I think we've actually done... Um, we believe we've we've done pretty well, uh, and so we've we've avoided we think uh, a few potential banana skins. Um, but you know the, the, these 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 are huge dilemmas for football. They're massive, you know, on on a scale which we probably have never had to address previously. You know, you you've got Manchester City and PSG in the same group in the Champions League. They they provided breathtaking football last year in the latter stages of the Champions League. It's, but, you know, if, if to produce that level of team and that level of football, you have to be owned by a sovereign wealth fund. Is, is that where football wants to be? Well, the problem is it's where football is. So uh, it's a bit late to have a philosophical discussion on whether, whether we want sovereign wealth and funds to own football clubs that, you know, that, that horse has bolted.